Hey everyone, today we're going to be doing a video on downloading and installing the Sharp MFP print driver. Um, the steps I'm going to be doing today uh, will be uh, applicable to many, many different models out there. So um, while I'm downloading my uh, print driver, I don't want you to get hung up on the particular model because like I said, the steps I'm going to do are um, very, very generic and they are um, applicable to uh, basically all the models out there. So um, uh, this is a way to do it. Even if you have an older model Sharp, uh, this is going to be what you're going to want to do. Um, first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up a web browser, as you can see right here. And we're going to type in the web address of www.sharpusa.com. So, S-H-A rpusa.com. Once we're here, we're going to click on the support at the top. And then we're going to find business product support and we're going to go to product downloads. Once we're in the product downloads, we're going to have to cycle through a couple of uh, drop down menus here. What we're going to do is we're going to choose the product category first. So we're going to open this up and we're going to choose MFPs. After we selected MFPs, we're now going to select our product model. And again, uh, this is where you would find the model that uh, you guys have. Um, today, again, I'm working on an MX5141. Um, so again, if you guys are working on other models, uh, you do want this particular area to be specific to the model that you are working on. So we find our model MXM. with me MX 5141N. Once I selected my product, I can then go ahead and select the file type that I'm going to be looking for. And this is going to be drivers. After I select drivers, I'm going to go ahead and hit search. And I should be presented with all available drivers for that model. Now within the driver list, we got a couple different options here. We have a Mac driver, we have some Windows drivers, we got a Linux driver, um, and uh, we have some various um, Windows type of packages here. Um, the um, thing to pay attention to is really in the description. If you're on a Mac, obviously this is where you're going to download the Mac driver. Just go ahead and download it and then run through the typical um, install process. But for Mac, you can see we got uh, we got some options here. Um, the biggest difference is going to be what the package contains. So I always look at the description um, and you can see these three, these two right here have uh, universal drivers and then the uh, this software package is actually just for uh, faxing, twaining, and um, uh, sharp status monitors. So you can see the print drivers are basically here with universal drivers designated at the top. And then I have a couple other Windows packages down here as well, uh, which do not contain the Windows uh, universal drivers. Typically, I shy away from the universal drivers. Um, I do like to use the drivers which are designed specific for that model. Um, that is not to say that the universal drivers are not good. Um, like I said, it's my own preference. I always stick to anything that does not say universal. Um, within this list of drivers down here, we can see that one driver package has a designation of WHQL. The WHQL designation is a Windows Hardware Quality Lab testing. So this means this driver uh, was specifically tested in the Windows Hardware Quality Labs and is uh, definitively compatible with all Windows. However, if we look in the description, we can see basically it's just a Twain driver. So if you guys are looking for WHQL drivers, um, really what you want to do is sort of uh, focus on these. We, we don't, for this particular model, we don't really have any sort of uh, WHQL drivers. Um, but again, I did want to uh, show you this designation um, is 
on some of the print drivers. And again, anytime you see this designation, this is actually a driver which is has been tested by uh, Windows and is uh, guaranteed to be com compatible. All right. So uh, in terms of the driver packages, what we're going to be looking for is we're going to be looking for either the 32 or the 64 bit um, driver packages, depending upon what type of computer you have. If you are using uh, a later Windows 8 or a l newer, you know, Windows 10, most of the Windows 8 and Windows 10 um, computers out there are all 64 bit, but some of the Windows 8, some of the earlier Windows 8s, uh, Windows 7s, Windows Vista, um, a lot of those were 32 bit. So you do want to make sure that you understand. Um, what architecture your computer is using. And this can be as simple as basically um, um, on your start menu, open up your start menu, go to your uh, control panel, go to your system, and then it will say in your description under your system. You can see that my system right now is a 64-bit operating system, okay? If it does not say 64-bit, then you, uh, by default, you have a 32-bit system. All 64-bit systems will say 64-bit, okay? So the driver I'm gonna download is gonna be for the 64-bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and download that. I would click on download that, and then it would uh, save to my downloads folder. Um, I do have it already downloaded. Once it's downloaded, you can see uh, it's going to come up as a zipped or compressed file. From here, I just want to make sure I extract um, the files. Now, um, when you are unzipping your file, your um, zip program may look a little different than mine. I'm just using WinRAR. Um, you can use you know, WinZip or whatever Microsoft uh, Windows com compression program is uh, uh, by default on your com computer. But essentially, you just want to make sure that you, everything does get extracted. What I like to do is I like to extract everything to the desktop and then um, save it in a specific folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Sharp. MX5141, just so I can find the folder easily once we're done. Once I have the folder selected that I want, I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and it's going to unzip everything. Uh, let me go ahead and get my window folder open here. Bear with me. Once I have my folder created and my uh, print drivers unzipped, I just got to refresh here. I'm going to find my folder that I created. I'm going to double click it and then I'm going to find my print driver. So basically, I'm going to uh, double click on this folder and then in here, I'm going to find my installer. So now we have two options here. What you can do is you can double click or you can right click and do a run as administrator. I always generally, I just always run everything as administrator to make sure that all the uh, security permissions are uh, applied uh, during the installation. Typically installing and running as an administrator will also allow the print driver to be installed for other users on this computer as well. If you just install it as a general user, sometimes depending upon the domain, the print driver may not show up across the board on your computer if other people log into your computer and use it as well. Uh, if you get any Windows uh, security windows, just go ahead and click yes. And you can see right now uh, we've started the process. Basically, the uh, installer is going to want to uh, unzip my stuff, and then it's going to start to install itself. So the defaults here should all be fine. Next, it's going to extract. After it extracts, you can see it follows with its installation process. This takes um, just a little bit of time. What it's going to do right now during the installation process is it's going to browse the network. It's going to look for any sharp MFPs which are currently on your network. And then it's going to see if it's uh, compatible 
uh, with those print drivers. So after it's done browsing the network, um, it'll find any model that it's compatible with, find its IP address, and um, go ahead and allow you to install it. So basically it's done its browsing now. We're going to go ahead from here, we're going to go ahead and do a standard installation. And we can see it's search, searching the local network now. This usually takes 30 seconds or so. So you can see it found it. Everything's good. Found my product. Found the IP address that it's on. And from here we can go ahead and click Next. And then from here we just sort of wait for the installation process to just move through its steps. While it's doing this process, it's going to be setting up the devices at the very end of the process um, after the driver is installed. Typically what we need to do is we need to uh, then add the options um, that it has and the available finishing options, extra paper trays if there's a hole punch or a stapler or anything like that. Um, that's usually done um, after this process. So once this is done, this shouldn't take very much longer. Okay, and you can see now it uh, finished its installation, and we got some standard messages here that says, after the installation, auto configuration is set by the following procedure. This is what I mean when I say uh, we're going to have to manually go in and add the available features for finishing and extra paper trays and stuff like that. So at this point, what we want to do is just go ahead and click OK. Now, typically, the Sharp Print driver always gives this little message, says Windows must be restarted uh, to complete the installation. Do you want to restart now? This is absolutely not necessary. So feel free to go ahead and click No. Um, after the driver's installed, it's installed, and it's fully functional, ready to go. So the last part of the process is going to be uh, going back to the uh, con control panel and then um, updating the print driver. Uh, with the uh, available options that the machine has. So what we do here, open up our control panel, go back to our devices and printers folder. We're going to find the printer that we just installed, which is going to be my Sharp MX5141 PCL. I'm going to right click, and then I'm going to go to Printer Properties. It's very important that you choose printer properties as opposed to properties at the bottom. Once I have my printer properties opened up, I'm going to go to the uh, tab that's all the way over on the right, and it's going to be called Configuration. I'm going to click this. And then from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select Auto Configuration. The Auto Configuration will browse the machine, contact the machine, and ask the machine to respond with all the available options which are already installed. So you don't have to go over there and look at it and say, oh, is this right, is this right, is this right? So basically, it contacts the machine and it tells you exactly what it has. So we just click here, click here, click here, and click Finisher. And then once we're done, we click OK. And the machine is now completely updated uh, with all the current configuration. From here, we can click Apply and we are all good. After the uh, settings are applied, if you want to, you can go to the uh, General tab and go ahead and print Test Page, and uh, you should have a test page come out. That is it. Um, super duper easy. Again, you know, it's just a matter of going to the uh, Sharp USA website and then uh, knowing the model that you have and being able to tell what architecture you guys have on your computer, whether it's 32-bit or 64-bit. And again, generally, I prefer to stay away from the universal print drivers. Um, but, you know, the, the installation of the uh, universal print drivers, it, it's exactly the same process. Um, so either way, if you guys like the universal print drivers, go ahead and download them and use them. Uh, if you want to shy away from them, then you have the uh, other print drivers available. 
that's it. Thanks, guys, for listening.